of the hidden references were you able to uncover in Spider-Man No Way Home? It's time to test your skills in the alternate reality Easter egg hunt. From the crowd we hear, you're just a kid? Calling back to Spider-Man 2 when Toby's identity is also revealed after stopping the train and one of the civilians he saves says, He's just a kid. Peter and MJ swing past a Rogers the Musical ad, the Broadway musical Clint Barton attends in the Hawkeye series. Oh, MJ, I'm so sorry, but I can't see anything. The Times Square billboard reveals the half Spider-Man face image that was used to reveal when Peter's spider sense was activated in the comics. The Roosevelt Island tram in the background behind Peter and MJ is the same tramway where Goblin forced Toby to choose between the tram full of civilians and MJ in the finale of the 2002 Spider-Man. Don't do it, Goblin! We are who we choose to be. Now choose! Is Peter's use of web and manhole cover a moment of foreshadowing? Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man was last seen on screen in The Amazing Spider-Man 2, using a web and manhole cover to take down the rhino. The deli that's behind Peter and MJ is the third Del Mar's establishment to be featured in the trilogy. The first deli appeared in Homecoming, and the second appeared in a Far From Home deleted scene. Are you planning a trip? Uh, Europe, yeah. Oh, can I come? The DODC, the Department of Damage Control, first appeared in Marvel Comics and was also the same organization that took over for Adrian Toomes in Homecoming. Ms. Jones Watson? Jones, I don't go by Watson. Within the DODC interrogation, we find out that MJ, AKA Michelle Jones's legal name, is actually Michelle Jones Watson, a reference to MJ's original last name in the comics. Unexpected and welcome surprise for Marvel fans is the appearance of Matt Murdock, blind lawyer by day and the vigilante known as Daredevil by night. Murdoch's super-powered radar alerts him to the brick hurled at Peter Parker. How did you just do that? I'm a really good lawyer. In the comics, Betty Brant was originally J. Jonah Jameson's secretary before later becoming a reporter for the Daily Bugle. License plate reference to the first Spider-Man comics in 1963. This car's license plate is a sweet homage to the birthday of one of Spider-Man's creators. Comics icon Stan Lee was born on December 28th. I guess one person can make a difference. The power of the sun in the palm of my hand. This dialogue is a reference to the Spider-Man 2 film. The power of the sun in the palm of my hand. MJ discovers Strange's secret to the perfect goatee in the workshop basement. That feels weird, but I'll allow it. Feast is the homeless shelter May worked at in the comics and later in the wildly popular Spider-Man video game. This image of Peter in the strange cape is similar to the zombie hunter Spider-Man in the cape from Marvel's What If. I just had a fight with Doctor Strange and I totally won! What? Look, I stole his ring thing. The purple hoodie Norman wears is a callback to the look of the comics with Norman in a purple hood. So Peter Parker, what pernicious propaganda are you peddling? JJJ's overuse of alliteration is a callback to the comics, and Jonah's headlines overusing alliteration. The power is different. I like it. Electro's powers mimic the yellow star mask the character originally wore in the comics. You have a lot of poor people. I just thought she was going to be black. Is Electro's wish for a black Spider-Man a nod to Marvel's other wildly popular Spider-Man, Miles Morales? Looking closely at the silhouettes of the beings about to break through into our reality, we see a silhouette carrying a spear, which appears to be Spider-Man rogue Kraven the Hunter. This looks like the rogue with the deadly stinging tail, Scorpion. And last but not least, this image looks like the obscure but fan favorite six-armed Spider-Man. The grungily modest studio apartment Peter inhabits is a callback to Toby's Spider-Man 2 apartment and the one Peter could barely afford in the original comics. Peter sewing his own suit is a callback to the comics creation of his first spider suit. The color and design of Peter's latest suit at the end of the film is most similar to the original look created by Steve Ditko in the comics. Did you find them all? Watch the film again and find these references and many more yet to be discovered.